my name is Minister Mark McLean, and I am the president of the New, of the New Rochelle branch of the NAACP. NAACP has fought for social justice and racial equality and inclusion in this community of New Rochelle since 1923. We are here today because our community has been plunged into crisis. A crisis that has been precipitated by a void of leadership at the Board of Education. The irresponsible hiring of Laura Fijo Fehu, a person that is engaged in a destructive reverse racism lawsuit against the Latino Chancellor of, New, of the New York City School is a vicious attack on the bedrock values of diversity and inclusion that has always been at the core of community life in New Rochelle. I am here today with the 100% support of the leader and president of the New York State Conference of the NAACP, Dr. Hazel Duke, to stand with my fellow neighbors. Neighbors who are black, white, and brown, who are parents, teachers, clergy, and community leaders, to say no to going backwards, no to cultural incompetence, no to anti-diversity, and no to Laura Fehu as superintendent of schools. We are committed to this fight, and we will win this fight. Because as Dr. Martin Luther King declared, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. No justice, no peace. No peace. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Bruce Soloway. My wife and I have lived in New Rochelle for 30 years, and our two children are graduates of the New York City, uh, of the New Rochelle Public Schools. Can you spell your name? Bruce Soloway, S-O-L-O-W-A-Y. I'm a family physician. 60 years ago, there were white people in New Rochelle who fought bitterly to stop the integration of the city schools. Those white people took their losing battle all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Shell became known as the Little Rock of the North. In a continuation of that struggle, there are white people in New Rochelle today who are fighting to who are fighting bitterly to stop the implementation of the school district strategic roadmap, which promises diversity and cultural competence in our school's faculty and educational leadership. There are white people in New Rochelle today who have used fear mongering, intimidation, and character assassination to force out a school superintendent and numerous educational leaders of color. There are white people in New Rochelle today who applaud Laura Fehu's $90 million lawsuit against the New York City Department of Education for so-called reverse discrimination, a clear and public act of resistance to diversification of educational leadership. There are white people in New Rochelle today who say Dr. Fehu deserves a second chance or a benefit of the doubt but who actually see her as the best hope to bury the strategic roadmap once and for all. But there are also white people in New Rochelle who believe that we are one community. There are white people in New Rochelle who believe that our black and brown neighbors are entitled to exactly the same rights that we as white people usually take for granted. Access to health care, decent housing, solid employment, quality education, fair representation and the leadership of our city and our schools, and that students are entitled to teachers and educational leaders who reflect their diversity. There are white people in New Rochelle who are committed to fairness and justice, who want to live in harmony, to move forward, to build a more inclusive city, not to build higher walls and hold on to a dying past of unearned privilege. To those white people of conscience, we say Laura Fehu is not qualified to, cannot, and must not lead New Rochelle schools. Do not let a white, vocal minority usurp your voice and lead us further down a road of racial conflict and division. Stand up, speak out, circulate petitions, write letters, come to meetings of the city council and the school board and make your voices heard. New Rochelle must never again become the Little Rock of the North. 
working as one community, we can stop this disastrously misguided appointment and continue to follow the roadmap together towards a fairer, more inclusive new Rochelle. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is DeQuincy Hentz. I'm the pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church here in New Rochelle. New Rochelle is a city where government officials and so-called leaders of our schools hail and acclaim diversity. But we've come here today to say there is no, ver not, no diversity without parity. There's no diversity without real efforts towards unity. There's no diversity without decisions and actions to bring our community together versus actions and decisions to rend us and tear us apart. Bringing Dr. Fehu, an individual whose actions and lawsuit cause us to have serious questions about her commitment to diversity is a mistake and a decision that we will vehemently oppose for the sake of all children in New Rochelle. The school board disregarded diversity and did not consider the community when they hired someone who claims reverse racism, a false and distorted concept. The school board disregarded diversity and did not consider the community when they violated their own policy, 8260, which, which requires community input when selecting a superintendent. The school board continues to disregard diversity and the community by hosting a meet and greet here at the high school tonight, even though opposition and concerns have been expressed by parents, significant leaders of the African-American and Hispanic communities, and by the broader community. Often this country is referred to as a melting pot, but I do not like that metaphor. We are more like a tossed salad, where every piece that makes it up is blended and tasted. For the sake of our children, we will not melt down. For the sake of future generations, we will not melt down. For the sake of this city, a better New Rochelle, we will not melt down, but we will keep standing for our children. Amen. I stand before you as a representative of the non-existent Citizens Advisory Committee. Again, non-existent Citizens Advisory Committee, which according to the BOE's own bylaws, section 8260, would provide community involvement to quote, help vet all superintendent candidates. I stand here to re represent the 1,000, yes, 1,000 people who signed the petition calling for the board to withdraw Fayho's contract or encourage her to vacate her contract. We are parents, neighbors, grandparents, we are community members, and many are not here today out of fear. Because in the Latino community, many are threatened because of the presence of ICE in New Rochelle, threatening our places of work and our places of worship. But I represent those people. The Latino community will not be silenced on this issue, and I will use this platform to speak for those who could not be here. Here in New Rochelle, we can learn a thing or two from our children on the playground who all play with each other across many lines of difference. Last year, our community, Black, Latinx, and White came out to support the CELA program, a dual language program that is unique to New Rochelle and not offered in every city, a program that offers cultural competence, inclusivity, and we fought as a community to ensure that program continues. But these programs of diversity, representation are under attack. We should be proud to be immigrants and know that we will be safe in this community from harm. But we lack representation in the policy making of this city and we trusted our elected officials on the BOE. But the superintendent decision reminds many of us of the painful history of racism in this nation where over and over people of color are silent. We are told, be quiet, give her a chance. But had we been consulted like the bylaws called for, we would yes. never be in this position today where our community
community is so polarized. We call on the BOE to ally with us, together with us, with the community that elected them to right this wrong. Let me be clear, our only agenda as parents is to make sure our children have school leaders that are working in the best interest of all of them, including historically marginalized groups. That's right. We believe in inclusivity and equity and know that New Rochelle needs leaders with cultural sensitivity enough to recognize what a reverse discrimination lawsuit would symbolize to our city. A slap in the face. Thank you. Muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Heriberto Contreras, padre de familia de dos alumnos en este distrito. Mi mensajero de muchos padres de familia que no pudieron estar aquí con nosotros. Tenemos una gran preocupación por la educación futura de nuestros hijos y también por el recién empleo de la futura superintendente del distrito escolar. La pendiente demanda que la superintendente tiene ante el departamento escolar de la ciudad de Nueva York es una falta de respeto y es una falta de entendimiento hacia las personas de color. Nosotros tenemos un gran deseo de pertenecer, de trabajar y de contribuir en esa gran sociedad. Y ese liderazgo no es representativo de nuestros deseos. Nuestros estudiantes latinos poseen el porcentaje más bajo de graduación de esta escuela, New York Shell High School. Y aún somos la mayoría de estudiantes que estamos en esta escuela. No tenemos representación en ninguno de los niveles, en ninguno de los niveles este, representativos en esta ciudad. A nivel de gobernación local, en el departamento escolar, ni en el distrito escolar. Nuestros estudiantes ocupan liderazgo, líderes que se parezcan a ellos, que entiendan su cultura y que también los sienten a lograr su potencial. Es por ello que el nuevo superintendente no lo apoyamos. Talk about what your process would be in coming into a new role in a new district to kind of get your feet on the ground and you know, sort of understand what the issues are in terms of you know, uh, different programs, issues that parents might have like class sizes or you know, uh, other kind of things that are related to uh, a parent concern about how you're going to address pedagogical issues, you know, educational issues, any transformative issues. Sure. So the first few months, it's important for me to be inside the schools, talk to the principals and the assistant principals, the leadership team inside of schools to really understand each and every school. While New Rochelle is one school community, each school has a different sort of sense to it, a different sort of culture. And so I really want to get to know what each of those cultures are like, what people value, what do they love about the school, what do they think their next challenges are. And until I can really be an insider in the schools, um, then that's when I'll understand what the next steps might be for the schools. In terms of parents' concerns and how do we escalate them, it has got to be the expectation that schools handle problems. Certainly things may bubble out that are exceptionally challenging, but you know, there's a plan for teachers to first and foremost support students and that schools to be able to respond to the concerns of parents. Border concerns, of course, are ones for the Board of Education and for the superintendent, and those are things we'll address. Um, as they come up. Okay, well it's easy to ask you about all the problems. So I'm going to tell you that New Rochelle School System has some excellent programs. Like at the high school we have the PAVE program, we have the science research program on our sports, our football, our cheerleading, and some of these programs are really excellent. But I want to speak on sort of the academic side, especially for, let's get more for the high school, you know. Um, so when you've 
gun work in other districts in, in New York City. What have you done to take over situation and build on whatever the strengths are? You really have to pour over the data, and then you have to look at where the areas of strength are and where are the areas of weakness. I've, I've looked at the, the attendance data in the high school. I've seen some of the disproportionality in the special education data. Those are things you want to pinpoint and figure out then, based on the data, how do we look at the programs? How do we review the programs? There is no magic wand to solving any one of these problems. It's student by student and it's figuring out what students need to give them access to the same opportunities, to support them so that they're successful in those opportunities, and what are the things we do to make sure kids want to come here and be in school every day. It seems like the kids that are in school are doing really well, and so there's a group of students we really need to figure out what we can do to support them inside of schools and get them coming back to school. Well, um, but I'm also talking about the programs that um are well regarded for the students who uh, are coming to school and are, you know, into the system and if the families have really committed to the district. Uh, there is some concern that some of the uh, best programs in the school district, whether it's the AP Honors Track or whether it's the arts program, that, um, you know, maybe they're going to be sort of, there's a term deleveled or whatever like that. So I just wanted to get this idea that, um, it's more like about bootstrapping, mm -hmm. right? We have some things here that we do really, really well. I would assume that you looked at the district enough to know that there's some things that we do really well. So how do you, when you go into a new job, a new district, or new districts, we talked about that too, how do you, you know, build on the successes that the, the school or the district's already had? Well, I'll tell you the secret. First thing to do is talk to the students. They know what they like, they know what they've been successful at, and they know the intricate ways that we can improve any program, make a great program better, and provide more opportunity for that program. And even students who are in the middle, which are sometimes the ones we forget, they know what they need to be able to access, especially when you're talking about high school students, I think it's true for every grade level, what they need and what would support them in order to um, improve or to move forward or get access to programs. So the students are our first entry point to figuring out what we can do. Certainly the teachers and the staff as well um, to be able to support what they need to be able to move the programs forward. I think we're lifting up every single kid um, and that's the opportunity that we have here, especially when there's great things going on and kids aspiring to be a part of that and raising those programs up as well. Okay, so I remember, I think you mentioned Brooklyn. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to shift off inside school stuff. So one of the things we have going on here is uh, touch on Brooklyn a little bit, which is this is probably the hottest development area in Westchester County, certainly, and maybe all of New York State right now, like Brooklyn has been. Mm -hmm. And so you have this issue of kind of working with the city government, working with developers, dealing with what the projections are going to be for schools and stuff like that. So there's a lot of people that are looking at the district. They don't have any kids here. Maybe they never did. Maybe they never will. You know, they're living in a two-bedroom apartment. So, you know, what have you done, you know, in your in working in the city to work with the city government, to work with planning and developers and stuff like that? Because whatever they do, you end up getting the result. And it's a public school. You don't get to pick and choose. So. There has to be some coordination, and that's a big concern a lot of people have, is how does the school district work with the city, the developers? So can you speak about what your experience has been and how you might apply that here? So in, in communities like New Rochelle or in some of the communities in Brooklyn that I worked in, um, everyone's invested in the schools. A lot of times the communities are defined by their schools, so whether or not people have children in school, they are taxpayers, they care about their schools, they care about their community, and the value that schools and the next generation bring to that community. And so it's not just about parents and families and students, which is of course our priority. It's about working with senior citizen centers. Um, it's about working with the elected officials. It's about being a little bit a part of community boards so that we can see where the development is. It's about partnering in a community to make sure that everybody's voice is heard because everybody really does care about the schools, whether or not they have children in there. Did uh, you have an opportunity to meet people like the mayor, the development commissioner, the city manager, those folks? I had an opportunity to meet the mayor. Okay. Um, we are, I will across the time before I get here officially on November 1st, take as many opportunities as possible, uh, maintaining my current position, but as many opportunities as possible to come here on days to be able to meet more community members and to be able to um, 
get to know some things before I actually get here. Okay. So I haven't met some of the other people, but I hope to be able to do that in the coming but, months. But the mayor is always full of helpful advice. He so was. what advice did he give you that you can share? What was his tip um, or tips? I really only met him a very short time. He said what everyone else said. New Rochelle is a great place to be. Everyone cares. Everyone has a voice because they care and that um, we'll work together to figure out the things that we need to do as partners in this work. You found out that New Rochelleans aren't shy. They are not shy, but I like when people are upfront and speak their truth and talk about the things that they're interested in, their hopes, their dreams, and their concerns, because that's how we can better think about what the community wants and be a part of that community okay. together. Okay, so September's close, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so, Parents will be coming back into the schools. The teachers will be reporting back. So between, you know, the beginning of school and the superintendent's day's conference and when you're actually starting full time, uh, what are they going to see? Are you going to be in the buildings? Are you going to be at PTA meetings? Are you going to be at uh, meeting with the teachers? What are you going to do over the next few months? So all of the dates have not been decided. I will be here for opening day of school. That is the most exciting day of the school of the year. Um, I will be here for opening day and a couple other opportunities to be able to meet people um, before I actually get started. I want the school year to get started well, and I'd like to be a part of it as much as possible. Okay, that's good. That's all I got. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. A minute to tell you a little bit about me. I know you've seen uh, things on the website of the school district, but I am a lifelong educator. It's all I've ever wanted to do. I've worked in schools across New York City as a teacher. I started in a very challenging school where I um, cut my teeth and learned how to figure out how to help students in a challenging place. I left there eight years later. I was teacher of the year, and it was a lot of hard work. And I feel like every other job that I've ever had has to do with teaching and working with people and figuring out how children can help children and adults can help children. It was 30 years where I supported students in schools, parents, and community members. At some point I felt the law was broken and I did take action. The next, the next question is going to be from number 10. So, where we have been pinned against each other and open wounds that go so deep in this community. Are you aware of how fractured and divided our community is because of this decision? I want you to know. Are you aware? Here you Here you I was aware when I came into the school community that there were fractures and concerns that I could support in terms of bringing people together. I hear the concerns tonight. I hear what you're saying. I believe that there is work to be done here to bring people together. And I hear the concerns that people have. Um, yes, I hear what you're saying. I wanted to be, and I want to be the solution to that. I want to be able to hear and bring people together so that I can hear your concerns and your hopes and dreams for the school system. My experience across the school system has brought people together. And that opportunity and that experience that I have, I want to be able to bring it to the school community. I want to be a part of New Rochelle. There are so many great things that happened here. The first things I heard about coming here and what attracted me to here was that sense of community, lifelong residency, that people stayed here for long periods of time because they believed in the schools and they believed in diversity and they wanted to move things forward. And I was attracted to that, to be a part of a community like this that could really the things that you're doing in the schools and the advancement that you want to take, I think match my expertise. So I believe that we can do this together. Here in Rochelle. Here in Rochelle. My question is, um, so we've heard through this, this process of hiring the superintendent that they did not follow the, own, the Board of Education's own bylaws and rules. Can you give an explanation why that wasn't followed? And I can tell you that I do not believe that even if Dr. Fejo was not here and had not appointed her, and we were still in the midst of a search that we would consider bringing members of the community in to be involved in a superintendent search. Uh, welcome to New Rochelle. Um, 
I, I don't believe I don't believe you, you've answered any of our questions thus far. So that's sad. Very sad. Um, my question is, uh, we believe we're a community that believes in rules, policies, laws. So the Board of Education did not follow the bylaws. With all due respect, Amy, I disagree with you. So how do you feel, Dr. Feiju, about um, entering into a situation where the board unethically, illegally, has circumvented the will of the community, Amen. and you're here. So it's an illegal hire, it's an unethical hire. How do you feel about that? How does Dr. Feho feel about I am excited to be a part of this community. I understand this is a difficult forum. I understand that this is not the kind of welcome someone would imagine coming into a school community, excited to do work. I love children, I love education, it's all I've ever done. I believe that there's an opportunity here to come together, and I believe over time you'll see the person that I am, the educator that I am, and how much I care about kids and families and schools. It is the legacy that I've had across the system, in school districts, across the city. Whatever has brought me here, I am here to do the work that I've always done and that I want to do here in New Rochelle. And I do look forward to working with you, each and every one of you, to figure out those next steps that can begin to, that can begin to heal the community before this and the problems that were here and the next steps that need to happen and whatever else it takes to be a part of this community and to have you really see me and understand me as the educator that I am. It is all I wanted to do and I really believe over time you will see that about me. We won't. Someone who cares, as you said, so much about equity and that your record shows that, so much about children, how would you feel about potentially stepping aside in order to heal what is quite possibly one of the biggest damages that will happen in our school community. So I'm asking you, will you step down? Yes. Yes. Can you accept the kids? Yes. For each opportunity that I've been provided, I am 100% committed to New Rochelle and the work here. I went through a process I've spoken to a number of people. I want to begin to work with everyone in the school community, but I am 100% committed to New Rochelle. 100% committed to Lawson. Dr. Fahey, welcome. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to welcome you to New Rochelle. I wanted to say to you, there's obviously a lot of people here who think that you can't possibly have their best interests at heart due to the lawsuit that you filed. And I'm an employment lawyer, so I understand you can't speak freely about a lot of that. But 
what we do want to hear is comfort that you actually will hear what the black and Latinx communities need and take up their cause and how you're going to go about it based on what you said before and ideas what you have for the future. Thank you. So, so one of the ways I want to come into the school district is meeting with who have different challenges and different needs. And what I benchmark in education is what I want for them. I want them to have opportunity and access to have perseverance, to be able to deal with situations so that they can themselves persevere in life. They are two different girls that have um, different abilities and talents, and I'm constantly trying to find the right match for them so they can pursue the dreams and challenge, the dreams and hopes that they have for themselves. Some of them, sometimes there are struggles and sometimes there are not, but putting kids on the path to success means teaching them to advocate for themselves, to ask for the things that they need, to be able to ask for help when they have challenges, and to have access to the absolute best teachers and the absolute best opportunities that they can possibly have. And that's what I want for each and every child and why I want to come to your show. I was looking for a new chapter in my life and the opportunity presented itself. It is definitely not the beginning that I would have hoped. The cheering and the happiness, the getting to know me and understand me, and I am nervous tonight. I think you can hear that in my voice. I want to be here and I want to do this work. I know that there are wonderful people here that only care about education. I appreciate that people are saying exactly what they're thinking because the hardest thing to do is when people are talking behind your back. I see that that'll never be a problem here in Labor Show. Tell me directly, I'll hear directly from you. There will be no secrets. I want to know. I am committed to this because I believe in education and I do believe that communities can heal. If I can just defer for one, when I became a principal, it was a brand new school where people were so excited about coming to this school. It was a lottery school, and the borough president put her reputation on it, the Queens College School for Math, Science, and Technology, the entire university, the college put their uh, hands into it. It was going to be the best school ever. And what happened is everyone's hopes and dreams didn't get realized because everybody thought somebody else was doing it. The parents would not talk to the teachers because they felt that they were not treating their kids in their best interest. They felt like the teachers were not you know, ascribing to some prescribed curriculum. The college wanted to be a part of the everyday process in the school. The community was so fractured that three principals before me walked out. And I went in there and people said to me, why would you go to that school? You could be a principal any place. Why would you go with your history and what you've done and the great communities you've been able to work with, why would you go to that school? It's because they needed me at that time. It was a challenge, it was a difficult situation, and it was a match. For whatever reason, fate brings things together. I do believe fate brought me here. I, I understand that there are challenges and not everybody believes that, but when I commit to something, I do it 110%. I did that my entire career, even when it's hard. I am not a person that walks away from something, even when it's not understood. And I am committed to this, and I really want to be able to change things here in New Rochelle, and I want people to give me the opportunity to do that. And I appreciate, honestly, the front dialogue Anybody who knows me a long period of time, I say exactly what I'm thinking, and I expect the other person to do the same. I've never want someone to work for me and not be able to be totally honest with me. And I hear what you're saying, and I hear the concern, and I still want to be here to support the community. I've been very an educator 21 years, from children six weeks all the way to 21, I've been a professor. I'm culminating my degree with a doctoral degree in education, and I want to understand if you really understand what your lawsuit means. Do you really understand how it slaps the black and brown community people in this community in the face? We deal with this every day. I deal with it. 
the mic's off. No, one moment so that everyone can hear you. Hello? Okay, continue. We deal with it all the time. And we have to make a decision, a lot of us, if we just want a job and we have to be quiet. I don't think you understand. You stand before us and say, I'm, in, I'm engaged in a reverse discrimination. You have no idea what discrimination is. You have no idea what it means to suck up a whole bunch of crap just to have a job. You have no idea how many times many of us have been passed over because of someone, because of a structural system that doesn't benefit us. And now we have someone here, after all the things that we have been through in a year and a half, this community has been through so much. And someone who is saying, I stood up for myself, that's what you believe. Just answer the question. You believe that it exists. I'm telling you, it doesn't. Equity means, equity means you have to share something. It means that the, the dominant community has to give up something so that we can be present. It is not enough to have one of us in the room. It's not, that's like, oh, we have one, we got a diversity, we didn't ask for a diversity person. So whoever's mad about that, we didn't ask for that. She keep that, because that, that's just one of us. One person cannot speak for all of us. What I need is not what she needs, is not what she needs, is not. You have to hear the community. Hear New Rochelle. Fighting for the black community, fighting for the community of New Rochelle. I've worked with many people, white, black, Hispanic, Democrat, Republican, and I have taken some flag to work with Republicans <laughs> in my community. But I work with anybody that will work with me to move the ball forward. And she talked about something. We, we fought together, an eclectic group of people, fighting to save our black majority district. And we fought down, and we lost. Over uh, 10 years ago, I started advocating for diversity in this school district. Forced them to write, to rewrite a diversity policy along with an eclectic group of people. Ms. Oliver, Bob Cox, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, and just a few of us. But we fought for a new diversity policy, and it paid dividends. We had, we had a wonderful African-American principal, Reginald Richardson. We had a Superintendent of, uh, of HR, Dr. Joe Williams. How to create diversity. Yeah. And in the last two years, guess what? We lost everything. We lost every senior African American administrator in this district. And on top of that, this Board of Education. This is a constant refrain of disrespecting the African American community. Every senior African American administrator in this district, this Board of Education, without any input from the community, hires Ms. Fayou, who, who I, I don't know, she seems like a, 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 a wonderful person. But the fact of the matter is that she is, and she says it here today, and she does not understand how disrespectful that is, that she is 100% committed to a reverse discrimination lawsuit. That is the antithesis of the values, not only of the black community, but the community of New Rochelle as a whole. Of, 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 of disrespect, of insensitivity, of, cult, of, of cultural incompetence.
confidence when most of the board doesn't even bother to read the, the, the lawsuit before they say, oh, let's give this woman a job of $285,000 a year. So this is, this is and you don't, you, you don't even have any shame. You come here and you say, yeah, I'm 100% committed to a, 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 a reverse discrimination lawsuit. You don't even, you're not even aware of how disrespectful that is to the black community and to the community of New Rochelle. And it's for this reason that we will fight. We will never give up. Never. And never. we will fight this high by any means necessary. Yes. I feel like I can be a change that you'll want, given time. Number six? Who has number six? Hey, uh, welcome to your show. I truly apologize for the rude behavior you've had to tolerate oh. tonight. <laughs> you are a very brave woman to face the anger and disrespect of this community. And you are also a very, very brave to call out the injustice in the New York City schools when you were faced with discrimination. Therefore, I welcome you to a community where I work hard to pay my taxes for equitable school for all students and students attending schools, attending our schools. As to my question, our district has taken more than a few hits to express its reputation, particularly academically. Move on to something more important. What are your plans to restore and enhance our reputation? So that, so that I can be, that's what we're, that's what we're, that's what we're, that's what we're, everyone has the opportunity to ask the question. One of the first things that attracted me to New Rochelle was some of the wonderful things that happened here. And I think to capitalize on the arts and the sciences and the sports programs, and the accelerated programs, all of the language programs and opportunities there. This is a famous community. It is a place that people well respect. I know you've had challenges and fractures and concerns and safety issues, and I understand that those things have to be changed, but there is so much to celebrate. And that public image and putting it out there of all of the wonderful things that happen here at the same time we're working on the challenges, I think it's one way to do that. Being recognized for that, being um, in the newspapers and in Twitter and all of the different ways you put the reputation out there, it is a wonderful community that has that. I think that there is so much more work that can be done, but part of it is being able to come into a community and work together to figure out how we want to best do that. Exactly. And I have said publicly before that I do not believe reverse racism exists. And I, I, absolutely, I absolutely believe that my colleagues understand racism to be race um, prejudice plus power. We, we do understand that. I, I really want the community to hear us. I, you asked me a question and I'm giving you the most honest answer I can provide. Which is, the board supports Dr. Fejo and it is clear that the lens through which we were looking is not aligned with the lens the community wants us to look through. And that will inform future decisions. We are here and we are committed to do the hard work. This has not been easy for any of us. And we understand that our decision has brought you out. And that is, in many ways, that has been very, very, very painful. And I understand that. And I regret the pain that has been caused by this decision. But I will say this, that for the first time we are having conversation of the side at this level. And that is something that's important and should be sustained. These conversations need to continue to happen. No, we're not interested in the conversation. You made a million dollar mistake. I, this we, is a one point one. With all due respect, mistake. there's no there's not gonna be heckling. You asked a question and you I didn't answer both. my question. I, I asked both. You, what are you going to do to remove her I, but, from but the I, position so what I said, of the current power? What I said what I said is that the board of education supports her in this position but you don't support cannot be any clearer about that. Supporting a stranger, but you're not supporting her.
so-called reverse discrimination is an open declaration of resistance to diversification of educational leadership. Yeah. It is a declaration of cultural incompetence. And it is clear evidence that you're absolutely unqualified to lead the group of Michelle schools. It's also obvious now that you are not a uniter, you are a divider. are a polarizer, and the longer you pretend to be the heir to the Neurochel school system, the deeper those divisions and the deeper that polarization will go. Every day you continue this charade does harm to our community. And my question to you is, when will you decide that enough harm has been done and back off? Since it's the last question, I really do want to offer you that I am committed to really doing this work. I know it is a challenge. I hear the division. I have so much to share and so much to learn here in New Rochelle. There are so many opportunities that I think can happen if we do work together. I have to agree with the President that there is an opportunity for the open dialogue and conversation so that we can find a path forward, and I always believe that there is a path forward in education. <laughs>